my interest in music um, started young. My mother was a, a fan of uh, the singers, Billie Holiday, Sarah Vaughan, Ella Fitzgerald. So I grew up with that sound in the house. And my father was also interested in uh, music, big bands uh, primarily, so Basie and Ellington. And then um, I had two uncles, both of whom lived in New York City, where, which is my hometown. And so one uncle was actually uh, a jazz person, Uncle Bill. And he would take me to uh, some of the clubs that I could get into being underage. Because, For example, there, there were some clubs in the city at the time, like the Vanguard, that had Sunday afternoon sessions, uh, kind of an all-ages approach. So we could go over Sunday afternoons to the Vanguard and listen to uh, some of the bands. This is in the early 1960s. And my other uncle, Uncle Odie, was a subscriber to the uh, New York Philharmonic. So we got to go uh, to Phil and listen to Leonard Bernstein, who was conducting the Phil at that time, and go to some of the young people's concerts. So for me, it was all great stuff, you know, listening to jazz, listening to great classical music. And then later, I discovered uh, you know, Dylan and folk music and blues, uh, rock, you know, all that stuff, and it was all to me, very exciting music. You know, so I never really had clear demarcations between styles of music. It was just, it's good or it's not good, interesting or not interesting. So when I went to graduate school, um, my first non-psychology related activity was working with a jazz group on campus to bring uh, jazz performers to the University of Minnesota. And so, for example, Thelonious Monk and Sonny Rollins, you know, got to meet some of these cats behind the scenes, too, when they would come in. So that was fun. And I was working for the uh, local paper, the Minneapolis Tribune, uh, writing jazz reviews and uh, record reviews and, uh, and concert reviews in the big concert venue in the uh, city at that time, Minneapolis, was the, uh, was the uh, Guthrie Theater. And that's where uh, Sarah Bond would perform, and Miles Davis, and so hanging out with Wayne Shorter and Herbie Hancock in the back. Not really hanging out so much because uh, there was a fair amount of distance there between Miles and everybody else. Herbie was very friendly. As a matter of fact, one time, this was in May 67, uh, they had performed at the Guthrie Theater. I did the uh, review of the concert, and Herbie was very forthcoming. I mean, he was just a delight to be with. And it happened to be at a time when I was just heading to the New York to New York City back home the uh, week after, and Herbie Hancock had been playing at the Vanguard. So I got to see him back and back in Minneapolis and with his band. And the Vanguard is a venue in which uh, you can get to uh, talk to musicians because often they'll perform and then they'll take their break between sets back in the bar and so you get to uh, hang out. And and Herbie recognized me right away. He said, oh, how'd that review come out? That kind of stuff. So he was very friendly. So I enjoyed that. So my, was my, that was my orientation. And when I came to Erie to teach at Mercyhurst, uh, there was no public radio uh, station at the time. Later, um, there was talk about starting uh, an NPR affiliate station in Erie. And uh, I talked to some of the station management, WQL and Bob Chittister, and some others about uh, maybe making Mercyhurst a satellite station for WQLN. So we signed on in January of uh, 73 as a NPR affiliate radio station. And so Mercyhurst had one of the satellite stations. And so the first program that uh, we had at, uh, at the station was kind of a, it was a mixture of, it wasn't straight jazz, it was jazz, um, rock, blues, it was basically classical. So we might, for example, feature a flutist, you know, uh, who might, Ian Anderson will say, you know, playing with, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a jazz rock, folk kind of theme, but then go into something that might be uh, uh, maybe a Mozart flute concerto, you know, just kind of whatever themes, you know, would, would come up. So. 
we'd have a lot of fun with that. And so from 1973 until the present, uh, they've involved with QLN in a variety of uh, formats, uh, jazz and uh, contemporary music as well. Because I'm associated with the uh, Erie Philharmonic on, on the music advisory board there. So basically what we do is we work with the uh, conductors uh, to, right now it's Daniel Meyer, to try to uh, arrange a season for the upcoming year. And so that's, that's a lot of fun. And my advocacy within the Erie Phil is to make sure that we continue to support living composers. So it's not just about repertoire from the 18th and 19th centuries, you know, the Germans and the French and the Italian composers, but to make sure that we're supporting living uh, composers from around the world with a particular um, interest in living American composers. So that might include Libby Larson, or uh, Ellen Tauf's Village, or uh, John Harbison, any of the living composers in the United States. So that we're representing those composers as well. So that we see that classical music is a living art form. So to me it's all of a piece, you know, whether it's, uh, whether it's jazz, or rock, or folk, or blues classical, you know, anything that's worth hearing. So there's a lot of great music out there, world music too. So. Outstanding. <coughs> Did you ever learn how to play music yourself? You are one of the most Is knowledgeable people about music that I know personally. Um, the answer is no. I never really got to. I, I did um, learn a little bit about the bass when I was uh, younger, but we moved around so much in the city in Long Island that I never really had a time to develop uh, a, a relationship with uh, any of the music faculty at the high schools, junior high schools. So, really, it's the the biggest glaring omission in my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I were to return back to square <coughs> one, that's what I'd want to do: learn an instrument, especially piano. Do you think you ever will in this lifetime? I, I hope so. You yeah. know, it's not too late. Never too late. Never too late. 